we've been talking about harmony in the self. And now we are going on to harmony of the self with the body. All of these are familiar to you. We have already been through this in the five-day online sessions. So um, I'll take the liberty of not going into all details. And rather just, I think if we go through the main points and uh, we can take up, you know, our own understanding of this and any questions uh, related to it, I think it will be more fruitful than my just going on talking about it. So I'll just mention uh, some key points. Now here, this harmony of the self with the body is dealing with health and prosperity. So if we look at health, we have to look at health in the self and health in the body. If we are looking at the whole human being, you have to look at health in the self and health in the body. Now, health in the self is what uh, we can appreciate when we look at harmony in the self. So in the last session, what you heard about harmony in the self, whenever the self is in harmony, that is a healthy self. A self that is continuously in harmony, that is a truly healthy self. When it comes to health in the body, then we bring in the harmony of the self with the body. Similarly, if you look at prosperity, prosperity also will, you know, as we go further and you are aware of this, prosperity has to do with two things. One is the feeling of prosperity, and that is there in the self. And the other part is the physical facility part, which is related to the body. Wherever the body comes in, then there is um, the need to bring in physical facility because that is a requirement. So in this slide, this is uh, familiar to you probably. We have dealt with all this. The self is the one that is central to human existence. The body is merely an instrument of the self. Now, any questions regarding this or whatever I have said so far, uh, you can put up your question and or observation and we can take it up. If there are no hands raised, then I'll just go ahead because this is, I think, pretty straightforward. Okay, there is one hand raised. Yes, Geeta ji. Did you have Namaste, a question? Namaste, Didi. Yes, Didi. Namaste. Didi, in that case, can we call as a healthy self and unhealthy self? Because body we can call as healthy body, unhealthy body. Similarly, can we address self also like that, healthy self and unhealthy self? Yes, certainly we can. Mm -hmm. A self that is in harmony, mm. a self with understanding, that is a healthy self. A mm -hmm. self without the understanding, mm -hmm. a self in disharmony, mm -hmm. that would be an unhealthy self. Okay, 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 baby. But yeah. we may be switching between healthy self and unhealthy self. What is that? There will be some swapping, no, Didi. When I'm in understanding, it will be called as a healthy self, and sometimes it may not be called as a healthy self. Yes, so when we have completeness of right understanding, mm. then is the health self really truly healthy? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, at times we will be in harmony at times we will not be in harmony so at mm -hmm. times we will have health in the self at times we will not have health in the self okay okay Didi. thank you Didi. thank you brinda ji uh, uh, hello Didi. Uh, can we uh, call healthy self as a pure self only pure self um, and healthy self are one and same no not really. If we look at the self, there are two parts in the self, isn't it? 
two parts that we can at least uh, um, see you know when we look at start looking at the self you've been through some of the steps in the exercise one uh, just yeah. now yeah. and you've been through the harmony yeah. of the self so there is the imagination in the self whether desires thoughts expectations are going on in the self that is yeah one part of the self this is the part that keeps changing you can see for yourself you know today yeah. you have one type of desire yeah. tomorrow you have you know and you have thoughts related to that like there was talk of going to the engineering college or today i might have a desire i want to be a professor in such and such college and so on um you know and then slowly you know accordingly my thoughts go and then expectations and so on so this is one part that we can see within the imagination our desires thoughts expectations then there is another part what we said is our natural acceptance the pure part within the self that is the pure self what i really yes. want to be so when my imagination is in line with this pure part within me when the imagination is in line with the natural acceptance then i am in harmony so the self at that point is a healthy self this is what i would say does that make sense uh, yes yes thank you so the pure part of the self is you know unsullied by the imagination it is unsullied by the thoughts and all that it is unsullied by preconditionings and so on it is pure in itself but the imagination that can keep changing and so whenever it is in line with this pure part then the self behaves like a healthy self when the imagination is not in line okay. with the pure part then it obviously is in disharmony and it is unhealthy okay okay uh satya shila ji good evening ma'am yes good evening uh -huh. uh mam so my question is that uh, i have just two basic questions one is that if a self soul and life all mean the same and uh, see don't get into the words i would say you know if you have understood this part that there is a pure part the natural acceptance part and there is a imagination both are there within the self so some people refer to the pure part only as the soul some people refer to both of these together as the soul so that's why to avoid that confusion we are just talking about it as the self and these you know the lower activities in the self the imagination and the pure part the higher activity in the self that is the um the natural acceptance so if we understand that then you know different words may be used by different people but we will get the idea of you know what and ultimately it's not just about the words it is trying to see the reality for ourselves so when we start trying to observe it for yourself then it becomes a reality for you then you know there is now that you understood it now that you can see it for yourself then whatever word somebody may use for it you you know are able to see it uh but if the student asks us the same question like whether soul and self and life they all mean the same or what we are trying to say through self do they actually mean the same then how should we try to answer that question yeah like i just mentioned to you different people may use different words so it depends on what the meaning or who is using it is it what meaning so like i said you know some people use for the whole self some people use the word soul in tradition also it is used both ways mm hmm so yes. you would have to check the context really so when you understand this part then you will you will be able to figure out which is being referred to in a particular context isn't it yes yes and uh, just one short question um, how uh, like how much does uh, or how does a gene affect the self or do you think the genes will affect the self because they do affect the body that we know but do they actually affect the self also 
Yeah, we'll come back to this when we are doing the lecture 12. Okay. okay. We'll come back to you, this question of yours in the next lecture sure, because sure. there we are talking more about the body also. Sure. sure. You can remind Thank me if, I, if we don't get to talk of it. Sure, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. One more uh, hand is raised. We'll take this one and then we'll go to uh, going further. Nachiketa. Um, uh, Nachiketa ji. Uh, good afternoon, Sarmila ji. Good afternoon. Uh, actually, now we are given to understand that the soul has uh, two parts. One is transient, uh, which one can call imagination, and the other a pure, which is permanent. So, finally, whether the soul has uh, taken together uh, it is uh, permanent or it is transient or again contextually it can be tan transient or it can be permanent or one can say that if the imagination dominates the pure in a self in a non-healthy self then the self is uh, impermanent or when the pure dominates the imagination then it is permanent can you conclude like that <laughs> see if you try to analyze it logically it will be very difficult to come to a conclusion isn't it? The best thing to do is to try to see it for yourself. If you try to see it for yourself, you will be able to see these activities of desire, thought, expectation within yourself. You will also be able to see that there is this pure part within you, that natural acceptance part. And when you keep exploring, you will be able to see that it is possible for you to bring your desires, thoughts, expectations in line with the pure part. That means you are able to change your desires, thoughts, expectations and bring them in line with the pure part. And you will also be able to see that this pure part that is guiding you is always guiding you in the same way. It doesn't keep changing every now and then with time of day, with place, with season and so on. So this becomes a reality for you. Then you will be able to appreciate further. But you know, just by my saying something now and trying to logically reason it out, it's not going to help neither you nor anybody else because ultimately, until and unless I see it for myself, it just becomes one more preconditioning, one more belief. So I would suggest that, um, you know, keep these things open for yourself. That will be the best way to explore and try to do... Um, the observation exercises for yourself. And ultimately that is what will lead to better understanding. Is that okay? Thank you, madam. Thank you. Very nicely explained. Thank you. J. So, okay, we'll go further now. If you see, we've mentioned this self is central to human existence and the body is an instrument of the self. Now, we talked of a healthy self. So when the self is healthy, it has a feeling of responsibility towards the body. When the self is healthy, meaning when the self has the right understanding, it also has the right feeling. And with that right feeling, it has the feeling of responsibility towards the body. So the feeling of self-regulation. So it takes responsibility for nurturing the body, protecting the body and rightly utilizing the body. And that leads to health in the body. So, for example, you know, um, we can check for ourselves. Are we always nurturing the body? Or are we indulging in taste sometimes? And how often we do that? Because a lot of times when we indulge in taste, we don't care about the nurturing part. And even things that are harmful for the body, we keep taking them in, in, isn't it? So we can ask ourselves this, am I nurturing the body with every meal that I'm taking? Am I nurturing the body with all the intake that I'm taking? Not just the food part, but everything that I'm hearing, I'm seeing, I'm uh, touching, I'm tasting, everything that I take in through my sense organs, is it helping to nurture my body or is it damaging for my body? 
these questions we should ask ourselves. Similarly, when it comes to protecting the body, you know, the shelter, clothes, shoes, all these things. We can start checking, you know, are we practical about this or are we indulging again? And we'll uh, come to that in a short while. And then rightly utilizing the body. So for instance, we just talk, talked of the sense organs. What is the purpose of the sense organs? So the purpose of say taste or smell, just by smelling a piece of food, we are able to tell whether it is okay for consumption or not. But when we don't uh, use it just for that, when we don't use taste just for finding out if something is okay for consumption or it is say rotten or you know it has become bad and so we should not be eating it. That is really, you know, you can use the purpose of taste. I mean, that can be the purpose of the sense of taste. But a lot of times we like the taste of something, so we keep indulging in that taste. So is that really the right use, the right utilization of the body? Just like, uh, you know, we give the example of using the mic and all these things so that um, we don't have to shout and the mic will help to speak and so on. Similarly, we can look at within the body, you know, there are so many things like this sense organs, so whether we use them in the right way or not. Then if we look at the physical facility, physical facility is required to fulfill the responsibility of the self towards the body. So when we talked of self-regulation or responsibility towards the body, now the Self can have the feeling of responsibility towards the body, but to actually take care of the body, some physical facility is required to keep this body in good health. So um, this we can see, this is one more point that is made in the slide. And then further that whatever physical facility is required for the body, this can be identified we can make a list out of you know, all the things that are required to keep the body healthy. And we can also find that we can quantify this. And whatever is required for the body to stay healthy, that quantity is something that is limited. We can all see that, right? Quantity of food that you require, it's limited or unlimited. You can answer in the chat. Whatever food we require, it is limited. Yes, you can see all everybody is answering that limited. Similarly, clothes, shelter that are required by the body. Is it required in limited or unlimited quantity? Yes, this is also required in limited quantity. Similarly, you know, whatever instruments, equipments we may need for rightly utilizing the body. Is that also limited or unlimited quantity is required? Yes, all are limited. Yes, nice. So we are all able to see this, isn't it? I think there is a um, self-reflection here, Bhaiya. Ji. So while you're answering this, if there are um, you know, if anybody has any uh, questions, you can raise your hand and we can take those up. Sandhya ji. Uh, namaste, uh, Sharmila Didi. Sharmila Didi, namaste. I just uh, wanted to get a, a little bit clarification about unhealthy self because uh, uh, what what i understand is uh, self is something self sufficient and uh, it has got already uh, the good part of self which you are saying so but self itself is a, a good part and uh, it is something which is uh, which is not changeable or it, which has got a natural acceptance but uh, when it is a, a thought imagination and uh, desire comes 
we can say it's like a, a sun which has been getting hided uh, because of the clouds for that moment but the sun is something which is permanent so self is something permanent and intangible whereas the thoughts comes and goes and they just uh, they may be uh, disturbing our uh, they may be disturbing our right understanding but they doesn't uh, last for longer uh, the right understanding natural active acceptance are throughout and they are universal so they are not going to change so uh, saying unhealthy self is a bit uh, harsh i would say because self itself is a complete thing whereas uh, the things which come as a desire thought itself they are the uh, for some times and they keep on changing they are not permanent so how can it will make self unhealthy yeah so you are talking about the pure self yes and i am including the imagination in that that's all if you want to refer to the pure self and you want to say that it is always healthy that's fine i don't have any no, issues with that self itself is pure and uh, this there's nothing unpure about it the thoughts and all that's a part of it and need not to be exactly. all the thoughts, and need not to be all the thoughts imaginations are wrong and unhealthy so we cannot say the part which keeps on changing is unhealthy many times a uh, thoughts and imagination which keep, comes is uh, a uh, 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 a good part of yourself also every time we cannot say it's not worth it so i i uh, pardon yeah so my... yeah all i'll say is that sometimes the imagination is in line with the natural acceptance sometimes it's not that's all so yeah. whether you want to call it healthy unhealthy don't want to call it that's fine the words yes, are not important I personally i thought because otherwise the whole uh, concept of course goes wrong because we are always saying that uh, we are the uh, coexistence of body and self and self is someone who is always guiding right to us there can be no no, no 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 we are not saying self is guiding us we are saying that the self has the natural acceptance which is always guiding us our imagination may or may not be in line with this natural acceptance exactly. this is what but is being said yeah. and if self has got a natural acceptance then it cannot be unhealthy that is what i mean to say yeah the natural acceptance is the pure part of the self the imagination is the one that is not always in line with that pure part this is all that is being said we don't have to use the word healthy unhealthy if you yeah. don't okay. like it that's fine. okay okay, okay. thank you shamila thing is to uh, be able to see it for ourselves yeah ji thank you ji okay so um i think the reflection uh, that is probably done with yes so we are able to see that the physical facility that is required for our family can be recognized and it can be uh, you know the required quantity also can be recognized so nice we are able to see all that so going further if we can see that this physical facility for nurturing protecting and rightly utilizing the body is required in a limited quantity then we can truly understand what is prosperity so when we are talking of prosperity now here you can see in this slide of prosperity the feeling of having or producing more than required physical facility so there are three points here that are important to see one is that it is the feeling we're talking about the feeling then second point is we're talking about how much is required to be able to have or produce more than required definitely we need to know how much is required so we are talking about understanding how much of physical facility is required and the third part we are saying is having or producing more than required so it is not just about the feeling but also how much to identify how much is required and that is possible with the right understanding and then to make sure that we have you know availability or we are able to produce more than this required so having the right skills for that so all this would be required for the feeling of prosperity and how do you know that you have the feeling of prosperity 
you will know that you have a feeling of prosperity when you are rightly utilizing everything that you have already that you have you are rightly utilizing it and this means what this means that you will not accumulate if you you know when you have enough as soon as you get a little more also you will share it with others so in that process you will also be nurturing others rather than exploiting them so that would be a test for each one of us to see whether we are really prosperous or not we may have enough physical facility but that feeling of prosperity versus feeling of deprivation that we can check for ourselves so any questions on this on prosperity we can take them up if you can raise your hands if anyone has a question otherwise we'll go forward okay so i think this is uh, pretty much okay we'll go to the um, self reflection is there bhaiya on prosperity ji so you can answer this i have more than required physical facility for my family yes no or cannot say so any questions any um thing to clarify in this we can take it up otherwise after this reflection is done we can go forward in case if there's any question you can raise your hand i have a question uh, may i ask ji ji uh, so ma'am i just wanted to know uh, uh, the so you said that uh, the self has a responsibility towards body uh, mm -hmm. so is it does the body also have a responsibility towards the self the body has you know body is a material unit isn't it yes so the body will go by the material laws we we saw right the self yes 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 is a unit of consciousness the body is a material unit so the self has certain needs it has to do with feelings the body you know so the therefore the feeling of self regulation feeling of responsibility towards the body in the case of the body the body doesn't have the feelings part but the body goes by the material laws so it recognizes and fulfills that is what the body can do so the body is uh, you know nature has provided in such a way that the body can be used like a good tool by the self for using it for its purpose provided the self is aware of its purpose right yes body will be used in whatever way the self uses it body is available that's all it's like you know i have money available to me or i have food available to me let's take food hmm? i have food available to me i can choose to eat more than the body needs or i can choose to eat as much as the body needs and share the remaining food with a friend or with somebody who needs it that choice is up to me but how i use that food that is entirely up to me isn't it so the body is available to me as a wonderful tool i can use it towards my purpose or if i don't see my purpose and i only think of you know um, if i am uh, not having happiness within and i'm searching for happiness outside i may use the body um, you know the sense organs to derive happiness from them all those possibilities are there so it depends on what my level of understanding my meaning what is the level of understanding of the self accordingly the self will use the body does that make sense 
Yes, yes. So actually, yes, even I was actually thinking along the lines. It's uh, basically yeah. like a one way. Um, so like more like a though it's living, more like a non living thing, we can't expect the same thing, like as a self, uh, it's a one way relation, uh, we use the body as a medium to do something, but the medium can't give back anything to the self. It's just uh, a one way process, maybe. Uh, is that uh, I think, uh, that's the way so um i would say i can take responsibility for the body but definitely the body is providing me a lot of ways in which you know i am able to perceive so many things because of the sense organs in the body isn't it i am able to see i am able to hear i am yes, able to yes. touch i am able to discern so many things because of the availability of the body so it's a wonderful tool uh rather than calling it one way i would say that you know the body has its own role. I have my own role. But when it comes to between the two, who is taking charge of whom, hmm, I certainly yes. can take responsibility. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Ji. Thank you. So I think uh, the, the reflection is also over. And the majority of you uh, can see that, you know, you have more than required physical facility for your family. Uh, small percentage also saying no, but we can keep exploring. We can check for ourselves. Uh, have we identified the amount of physical facility we require for the body? All that we can check and then uh, re-ask ourselves that question and see where we stand. That is our own exploration. So there are, maybe we'll take one or two more questions before we move on. Um, yes, Raghavendra ji. Uh, madam, good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon. Uh, uh, in the in the movies, uh, they portray that uh, uh, the hero should smoke, should drink, should enjoy in parties. Uh, uh, in the realm of socialization, modern culture. Uh, okay, so. If the students follow that, or they say, uh, life is, uh, we have only one life, uh, okay, life is short, we have to enjoy, uh, what uh, answer we can give them? <laughs> we can ask them how they feel after they've enjoyed and they come back to reality. Okay. <laughs> so, um, you know, can we sustain that? Do we want, are we happy with that, you know, when you enjoy it? Supposing you say drink something, you talked of smoking, drinking. So the movies are being shown like this, but we can see what is true for us. So whatever we see and hear may not be true, isn't it? Or may not be the reality. So if when we try to see for ourselves, I mean, they can also see for themselves that, okay, they smoke, they drink, perhaps they get some temporary excitement, some temporary happiness for a while with that. What afterwards? You can see that smoking damages the body. You can also, you have learned many, you know, it's common knowledge that drinking damages the body. So we are doing something which is actually damaging the very tool that is there for our use. At the same time, this happiness that we are getting from that, it is very, very short lived. So we need to do this again and again and again to continue this happiness. And the need for happiness, which is there in the self, that is a continuous need. We'll just come to that. So we are trying to fulfill a need that is continuous with a temporary, you know, kind of um, something that will temporarily give happiness. So it doesn't work. So when we keep trying to do it again and again and again, we end up really damaging the body. And at the same time, we don't feel satisfied because that need in the self is continuous and it doesn't get satisfied with this. We saw, right, the needs of the self are fulfilled by the activities of the self. The needs of the body are fulfilled by physical facility. We can't try to mix the two. We do keep mixing the two, but it doesn't work, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank okay. you.
Um, Vinita ji is there. We'll take this last question before we move on. Ji. ंगीवेड those who have physical facility still are unhappy and deprived and where did we want to be we wanted to have physical facility and be happy and prosperous so we can see you know where we are out of these three situations so if you look at this we may be able to see that okay the reflection is up so you can do this uh, reflection first where do you want to be out of these three positions and meanwhile we'll you know if anybody has any further questions you can raise your hand and we'll take those Yes. So, Anita ji, Anita Mane ji, not able to give the mic. Bhaiya, can you give the mic? Uh, yeah. Good evening, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, the question was that having phys uh, physical facility makes us uh, happy and prosperous. I think I'm out. I'm audible because I've lost everything. Ma'am, am I audible? Because I don't have anything on my screen. Ji, sorry, somebody joining in a while. Just kindly wait for a while. Ji. I thought I lost myself, so I'm sorry. Hmm. No, you are perfectly audible. Okay. Ji. Thank you. Just inform me, then I'll start. Ji, ji, ji. Uh, is the pole reappearing and now and then now and then the same one yeah i think some technical issue okay i am back with the yes i am uh, sorry i was disconnected can i be heard bhaiya yeah. uh, yes, yes, yes not audible not audible yes ma'am okay okay ha ma'am so uh, um... i was uh can i ma'am yes please okay uh, ma'am we were talking of that uh, physical facility uh, leads us to if you have a proper physical facility you will be happy and prosperous that is true even we have chosen the pole the same way mm -hmm. but ma'am now just to have a uh, prosperity here we say that is what we need to have more little more than what we have now my daughter is in 11th now i need her to go for engineering or doctorate mm. i need to have that amount with me so i need to accumulate amount so should i say means i'm not prosperous right now does that mean that i'm not prosperous or i don't have that much of physical facility i'm not saying i'm not happy but i'm little confused in that yeah see in the situation we are in today we have set up society in such a way that the requirement has become in terms of money and it has become a huge requirement 
yes and so, i don't feel i have that much so yeah so we are setting ourselves up for this you know feeling of deprivation but in a you know uh, if we had the given the choice we don't want to be deprived isn't it very true so if we could help set up a society where we can be happy and prosperous and everybody can be happy and prosperous that is what we would like that is what we would like to make effort for hmm. but as of now a lot of problems are there in society agreed but ultimately we have to work for such a society where we don't have this feeling of deprivation isn't it no ma'am uh, my thing is ki how do i get myself out of it because yeah. i need to come out of it only then i can make others also understand yeah so here also i mean uh, you know there are some avenues where you don't require so much physical facility there are some other avenues of um, uh, you know education where you need more physical facility mm. so we can also see that you know it is not always translating to more physical facility required means better education it's not mm. always that mm. but a lot of times it is some uh, social something that is attached to it our preconditioning that certain colleges or uh, you know where the fees is higher or some colleges with a particular name only if we get educated there only then mm-hmm. we have a bright future not true i mean if you look at great people like apj abdul kalam and all who achieved so much mm-hmm. going to very basic schools very true so um i think somewhere we have also have to see how to keep a balance we don't have to get overboard by whatever is the general um, belief today we can try mm-hmm. to see for ourselves you know what is important for us where is the priority better understanding or you know a, a well recognized school or college only mm-hmm. all that we can see sorry to disturb you ma'am here in this i have also observed where you put your kids it also depends upon the place also the college also because if you have people who are not so much enthusiastic not so much goal oriented only come for making the, uh, what we say fun and this and where you have a college where they have certain goals and other things no true i mean as a parent we that. need to work on that also we can't put it ah uh-huh, this is less fee so let me put here this is what i'm saying you need to keep a balance i'm not saying only to look at fees i'm saying look at all the things mm-hmm. it is not necessary that the place which has the highest fee is the best for mm-hmm. education that is all i'm saying yeah beyond that you know one has to see for oneself there will be many factors to look at okay i am just mentioning that the two may not be connected that's okay. all okay yeah? okay okay i'll yeah. i'll work on it ma'am thank you yeah. ramila did it may i um i think we should go forward because in the interest of time i want to finish this and do one more lecture after that okay okay so uh we'll take up maybe another question later so we want to be in a state where we have physical facility be happy and prosperous so this we can only do when we identify how much we require correctly otherwise we will get driven by peer pressure and you know uh, look at so many more uh, ways of requiring physical facility so basically the point this is making is that happiness and physical facility have nothing to do with each other meaning that you may you know lack physical facility facility still be unhappy and deprived you may have physical facility still you can be unhappy or deprived so if you want happiness and you want prosperity then for the happiness part you have to have right understanding and right feeling for the prosperity part you have to have right understanding and right feeling and also the physical facility so all three would be required so this is what the point of this uh slide is and if you see 
today the biggest issue is the misunderstanding is that we are assuming ourselves to be the body so when the self or as a human being i think i am the body then whatever my needs are i am trying to see them in the body i am trying to fulfill my needs through the body because i think i am the body and if you see my needs are continuous so i keep trying to fulfill my continuous needs through the body and because i think i am the body i try to fulfill them through more and more and more physical facility so when i do that then it looks to me that the need of the physical facility is unlimited this is how i see it it's not true but this is how i see it so when i think that this need of physical facility is unlimited i keep trying to accumulate more and more and more but at the same time my need of the self is not fulfilled so i am still feeling deprived and this loop i keep going round and round and round in this loop this is what is happening so what is the solution how to come out of this loop become aware of the self and work towards right understanding in the self that would be the solution so any um, i think maybe we'll just take one question on this and then we'll move forward yes so you can take this um in the reflection we were able to see right we all want to be happy have physical facility be happy and be prosperous yes so right now there are no hands raised so i will just quickly sum this up and then we'll go on to the second lecture so um we talked of human being as coexistence of self and body consciousness and material self is the one that is central body is just a tool and when the self has the right understanding and the right feeling it has the feeling of responsibility towards the body to nurture protect and rightly utilize it and when it takes on this responsibility it also requires some physical facility to fulfill the responsibility towards the body now this physical facility we need in limited quantity and the important thing about prosperity is that we can be prosperous when we have the feeling of having or producing more than required for this we need to identify how much we need that we can do with right understanding and we can make that much or a little more available by having the right skills 